Welcome back to my tutorial series on modeling, now animating a clock in Maya. We are going to get started by adding some more frames to our animation. We'll go down to the timeline, add about 10,000 frames. This is an arbitrary number, it's not important, I'm just adding that many so I can play the animation and see the clock's movement for a longer period of time before it begins to loop. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is reopen the expression editor. Make sure the select filter is still set to by expression name. Click on the object clock. That's the expression clock. Um, it could have a different name if you didn't name yours or named it differently. In our case, it's called clock. And now we can begin editing our expression. So far, it's only a few lines. And now we're going to implement the function which allows our clock uh, second hand position to change over time. Now the property time in Maya is equivalent to one second. So 24 frames pass, Maya's time property would equal one second. 48 frames has passed, Maya's time property would equal two seconds. And so on and all the frames in between. So what I'm going to do is take our time property, say 24 seconds have passed, that, that, mean, that means time would equal one, and then I'll multiply it by negative six, once again, the negative property is to make sure our hands are going the right way. And by multiplying it by negative 6, it will move the clock 6 degrees for every time, uh, multiply by time. So let's set this up. We are just editing our expression. I will enter time times negative 6. And we want to set our clock time property, as I explained earlier. And we're going to be using it as an offset. So I'll use plus clock time. So, for it's time, in this case, we're just imagining time equals 1 times negative 6. That means the clock hands will be moved negative 6, I mean rotated negative 6 degrees. And then we'll add all of the degrees needed to make the time 8 o'clock. That's why it's an offset. We'll click Edit. Now, make sure our frame is starting at 1. Click Play. As you, see, as you can see, our second hand is now counting off the seconds. Now that's nice, but we're going to just make this a bit more interesting. You could actually leave it as it is right now. I've just stopped the animation, set it back to frame one, and I'm going to be writing an if statement. This if statement's purpose is to set it up so t it'll only move the clo uh, clock's hands every 24 seconds or every one second. So I'll write if then two normal brackets, and below that I will use two going brackets, one opening and one closing, and it will encase our expression which sets the second hand's rotation. So that means if whatever inside this brackets returns true, then perform this operation here. So what I'm going to set up is if time equals now, I can't say if time equals 1, or if time equals 2, or if time equals 3, because we can never enter that, uh, the, all the possible options and it would take forever and it's ridiculous. So what I'm going to do instead is r use a function. It's a simple mathematic function, and you can find it up here under insert functions, math functions. The function we need is floor. Um, if you don't know what floor is, it basically drops the decimal points of the prop of the value. So, for example, if the value was, z if time is equal to 0.5, floor will floor it to zero, and then it will continue on until time equals a whole number one. Well, then time and the floored value of time would equal one because they both are whole numbers, which is basically what floor returns the floored value, which is a whole, n whole number. I hope I explained that well. Um, so what we do is we type in floor, bracket, once again normal brackets, and in between those brackets we will enter time. Remember there must be an opening and closing brackets for all of these normal brackets. So once again this expression is if time equals floored value of time, which is just the whole number or the integer, then that means like if the frames, tw frame, if it's on frame 24, it will ch 
um, perform this function here. If it's on frame 48, it will perform this function here. But if it's on, say, frame 16, then the floor value will not match time, therefore not performing this value, I mean, this function here. So once I, I hope I'm explaining this clearly. So once again, if time equals, now another thing I should probably mention about this piece of code is the two equals signs. The reason for that is equals assigns something. Like if I wasn't to have two equals, what I'm actually writing here is time equals a flawed value of time. That's not right. I want to do a comparison, so that means I have to use two equal signs. Um, so that's basically it for now. I will click edit and play our animation. The clock is now ticking. So the next thing I want to clean up a bit is if you notice when you go back to frame 0 or 1 or whatever frame you're starting from, um, the clock doesn't move. So what we're going to do is add one more if statement that will go as if frame is equal to 1 or now we're going to use this symbol two of them represents or frame equals excuse me too many equals zero then do what's ever inside the go wing brackets well in this case what I'll put in the go wing brackets is second hand rotate C equals clock time. Yeah. One second. There we go. Somehow that went wrong. Like I said, this is supposed to equal clock time. Ditch that space. So click edit. And now, whenever we go back to frame 1 or 0, it will reset the clock. And that's basically it for this expression. Our clock can now tell time, and it can tick seconds off. Now, of course, you could probably expand upon this and add the ability to connect the wheel in the back to the actual setting of the clock's time. But for now, we'll leave it at this. I just want to show you that wheel. There you go. Like I said, you could connect it so this wheel actually controls the t time of the clock. But for now, I believe this is enough. And it's pretty accurate. Depending on your computer's graphics card, it should be able to tick off the seconds consistently. And one thing I should mention, if for some reason none of this seems to work, what you want to do is make sure your computer is playing your animation at 24 frames per second. You can verify this by going to Window, setting slash preferences preferences then go down to settings I mean excuse me timeline and make sure the playback speed is set to real time now in my case it's 24 seconds um, if it was set to play every frame none of this will work at all you really want to make sure it's set to real time so that concludes this tutorial series on modeling and and animating a clock. You can finish your completed clock. I mean, you can save your completed clock now. Thanks for watching this tutorial series. I hope you've enjoyed it.